Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, the redhead, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. Hi, everybody. Beatrice, there's something about you tonight. You're looking a little different, oh, really? a little sexy. You're giving me a different vibe. Thanks, vibe, vibe check. check. What did you do? I can't tell. I can't put my finger on it. You know, I just woke up like this. Well, whatever it is, it's working for you, honey. <laughs> Thanks. We are gathered here today to talk the season finale oh. of Vanderpump Rules. We made it. We made it to the end, honey. Now, before we get into all that jazz, we just want to remind you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast we say a lot of bad words we have stupid opinions and we are unapologetic about it so if you're so silly old, you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby <laughs> but if you're down and you're ready to just have a good time welcome to this dumpster and if you are down and ready to party be sure to follow us on instagram at reality tv cringe and join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe that's where all the juicy trash is at and if you are watching on youtube please do not forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us in the algorithm and that helps us to grow the dumpster so thank you in advance please and thank you okay so before we get into the episode uh -huh. there was some news what? in the vanderpump universe a little bit oh okay it's this rumor that Lala might be defecting oh, yeah. from Vanderpump Rules and heading on over to the valley, Ugh, baby. What why? do you think about that? I don't like that. I don't want to see Lala on two yeah. Bravo shows, especially not the valley. What if it's only on the valley and no longer on VPR? Then maybe, but I'm like, ugh. Yeah. I don't know. She's annoying me. She annoyed me this whole season. She annoyed me in this last episode. Mm. We'll get to it. But I'm just like, I'm over her. I'm over her as well. And it just comes off feeling very entitled. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's not working for you yeah. at VPR anymore. So let me just go over to this trash fire and make it worse over there. Like, we don't need any of that. What we actually need from Lala is some growth. Yeah. It's some personal development. It's some therapy. Yeah. Because she's an angry person and we don't know why. Well, she's fucking crazy. And she says she's growing. She says she's in her soft era, but I don't see it's it. Only hard edges. Yeah. That's what I'm picking up from her. 100%. Now, let me ask you, at the end of the Vanderpump episode, it kind of felt like not a season finale, but a series finale. That was actually going to be my hot take today. Oh, it was? Was okay. that? Well, why don't you talk about it? Yeah, no, I literally thought it it's, feels like a series finale. Like they're showing flashbacks to the beginning of the show and earlier seasons. And I'm like, mm, what? Honestly, good. Because yeah. it seems like we don't got nothing else to offer besides Scandaval and his stupid um, redemption arc. Mm -hmm. But like, what else are you going to do? I don't know, platform Sheena more Ew. because they seem to really like doing that. Then that takes me to my take. So my take is that I feel like a dum-dum. Why? I went into this season oh. really thinking Ariana was going to look like a mean girl. Yeah. I was really buying what Lala and I think Sheena was saying like, oh, by the end of the season, you're going to see. She's like got a big fucking ego. She's a problem. And so I thought that we were going to get even a little bit of that. Mm -mm. But honestly, Ariana has held herself with such composure and dignity yep. and righteousness. Like when she's talking to the producer tonight at Kyle Chan's whatever, whatever. I'm just like, oh, my God, talk. I know. Speak. I, I, I like Ariana. Me and too. And coming into the season... I didn't really like Ariana that much. Yeah, you didn't. But I like Ariana a lot more than I like Lala and Sheena. Me too. The only thing for me with her is that she did kind of lie in this episode when she's like, I never said I wouldn't yeah. be friends with anybody who's friends with Sandoval. I'm like, mm, you did. Yeah. A lot. But that's okay. I'll give you a pass. But I liked her this episode. I'm like, work, bitch. Yes. She stood on business. Yes. Exactly what she's been saying this entire time. It's not like she's flip-flopping like Sheena does in like virtually every episode. When she's yep. talking to Ariana, she's team Ariana. When she's talking to Tom, she's team Tom. And I'm sick of her and her apples. Me too. And her good as gold bullshit. And I was I cringing know. so deeply I when she was know. performing with the 27s. I'm like, oh. you are almost 40 years old, Sheena. Yes. Like, 
The landscape changes when you're in your 40s and then you barrel like a locomotive into your 50s. And like, is this all you're giving is this narcissistic self-absorption? Mm-hmm. Because, ugh. I can't stand ick. it. And did you see her outfit too? She's mm-hmm. like thinking she looks so cute in that weird little Brock's tool. To- oh my God. Brock's outfit. I know. The all gold suit. Have to be in the center. mm Of everybody's attention. It was wild to me. The other thing that I wanted to say in my major takeaway is that despite like how I feel about Lala and Sheena and Ariana, I do have to agree with some of the sentiments which are basically, Ariana, what are you going to do though? Like you are part of an ensemble cast. You have every right to be pissed off. You have every right to have boundaries and to maintain them. Yeah. But at the end of the day... You're going to have to put yourself out there in an authentic way with this cast, unless they change the cast, yeah. unless they stop the show. You're going to have to come back and give something authentic and have conversations that you might not want to have. Otherwise, what are we doing here? It's like the ladies on Potomac. It's like Giselle, who does not want to film with Candace. Well, that's untenable. It's like on Beverly Hills when they're icing out one of the housewives. It's like, this is your job. Yeah, Show up and do your fucking job. I guess. And so I, that came from Lala a little bit. Like we heard that throughout the season and she especially said that tonight. Um, and, I, and I'm not saying I agree, but there's a kernel of that in terms of like the business, in terms of the show, that is very practical. And so Ariana is going to have to make some decisions. Do you want to come back to this shit show? Right. And just not talk to people? That's not compelling television to me. Like we got a whole season of that. We can understand it. But what's next? Right. I mean, I guess that's a fair point in terms of like, what else are you going to do on the show? What else can you provide? But like, in my opinion, I'm like, it's a problem with Bravo. It's a problem with Bravo's contracts and Mm. being like, yeah, you have to be around this abusive narcissist, whether you like it or not. And you have to be able to deal with these uncomfortable conversations with him and be triggered by him constantly because it makes good television. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. Ariana's a human. If we're going to sit there and humanize Sandoval, we need to humanize her too. And like you said, she's allowed to have boundaries and everything. But I guess I see your point. Like she... How is it sustainable right. into like subsequent seasons? Like exactly. how do we continue to do this? Like Ariana, what else though are you bringing to the table besides something about her? And this is something that Lala has said on repeat. And yeah. I hate to actually agree with her on anything, but she's like, and she said it in the after show. I think she said something like, you know, Ariana brings fucking nothing. She's a non motherfucking factor. She doesn't have storylines. She hides behind Tom. Tom is the one who shows up to everything. Yeah. And I don't, really agree with that because I think Ariana does bring something to the show but like what's next yeah and like what else do you have to offer besides your upsetness no for real and like the whole purpose of the show is like to be crazy and to be drunk and like to cause drama and be self-centered so like Ariana it seems like is growing out of it and just being like I'm over it like fuck all of y'all I'm here getting my back blown out by Dan Mm -hmm. like peace out and she's got all these fucking brand deals like does she even need the the paycheck from Bravo well money runs out you know fame runs out the shine that's currently on her may or may not run out I think Vanderpump's a great vehicle to keep some of that shine on her Mm -hmm. and if she continues to conduct herself with dignity I think she only opens up the opportunity to get more brand deals so I could see why she'd want to come back but like now you're going to have to figure out who you're going to be and who you're going to let us see right that's a good point so those were my thoughts wow about the this, this season and about this episode so let's get into it babe all right well like we have a couple things going on we have before Kyle Chan's event and Kyle Chan's event. Okay. And I don't remember anything before Kyle, Kyle I mean, Chan's event. pretty much there was nothing besides like Lala saying that Dan's a fucking square. And I'm like, girl, you are so jealous. You are so bitter. So bitter. It's giving misandry yes. a little bit. But like, he's such a decent man. He's so great. He's clearly on this trip to San Francisco purely to support Ariana in the ways that she wants him to show up for her. Like, yep. he's doing everything right. And the only thing you can do is kvetch about how Ariana said, like, he will throw hands if you come at me. Yeah. And she calls that being a square. No, that's <laughs> called being like a partner. Yeah. Somebody who's supporting you. You're I'm just so, so jealous. She's so jealous. In every way. 
after her fucking relationship with Toad Man ends, mm-hmm. she ends up single. She doesn't get a hot ass man who's flirting with her and immediately starts banging her back out like Ariana. And then she doesn't get all these brand deals mm-hmm. and DSW and all this shit. So yeah, she's fucking bitter and jealous and it's kind of cringe. Well, doesn't Sheena address this a little bit in the after show? She's talking about how there's been a few people on the cast who have gone through pretty bad breakups and have had bad betrayals, bad things happen to them. But the world didn't stand behind them like they did for Ariana. And Mm. she's like, you know, and so of course I'm happy for her, but at the same time, like, why didn't I get any of that? And you've got cast members who are saying like, why didn't the audience show up for me that way? And it, it's interesting. I think it's because we've all gotten older. Yeah. We've all got our own families now and our own marriages now. And so it hits a little different versus when we're in our twenties and we're just drunk all the time. Right. And I mean, Ariana and Tom had a nine year relationship and that's serious. And they got a fucking house together. Like that's a big fucking deal for him to just be fucking her best friend, raw dogging her best friend for nine months or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I'm just, I think these women are so fucking jealous that it didn't happen for them. And like, that's, embarrassing for you guys yes honestly and then we have um the whole like lunch date in chinatown oh, that's right yeah and sandoval's not there but dan ariana james ali all of them are there okay and lala is interrogating the fuck out of dan why is she jealous. doing this for production mm. is she doing this because she's a jealous hoe is she doing this because she's genuinely curious and this is how she fact finds either way it's very inappropriate mm-hmm. to do that to the guy at the table who's new to the group and she feels it's just the thing with lala she feels so fucking entitled to do whatever she wants whenever she wants to and you can't call her out no. but she stands ready always to call everybody else out so hypocritical it's super hypocritical. would she like that if she brought a dude she wouldn't let anybody do that to randall really no and she wouldn't let anybody question their relationship you saw the clip back to katie yeah. and her sitting down outside of sir and katie's like well we're just supposed to pretend you're not dating a married man she lies about it yeah no she would not brook any questioning any criticism of randall for season after season after season so it's like really rich yeah to have you sitting down in non-king and just drilling this guy who's nothing but a good person like by all appearances it's probably because she's attracted to him and she's fucking jealous because ariana's got this hot ass man who's Mm -hmm. totally into her and he's like so awesome like he's like talking about why he loves her why he well not loves her but like why he's attracted to her and everything and she's so empathetic and so graceful and you know she talks about how she was attracted to him and like they're just like always holding hands and always Mm -hmm. cuddling i'm like i like them yeah why wouldn't you they seem great they seem well adjusted they seem calm they seem into each other i'm nothing but happy for them and i don't know why the group is like judging ariana for moving on from sandoval like eight days after like they're saying Oh, she banged him eight days after the whole scandal thing. She didn't, thing. though. Exactly. So I'm like, why Why are you why coming you for Ariana when you're not coming from right. for Sandoval, who fucked her best friend mm-hmm. for over a year? And some of you knew about it and just kept it a secret. Like, fuck y'all. Right. Honestly. Yes. So, yeah, that was pretty much it with that. Well, another thing happened, which is when Tom said something about Tom oh, Sandoval. Yeah. Schwartz said about Tom Sandoval, like... He's not a trash person. He's yes. a person who did a trash thing. And then Ariana across the table said, no, we're not talking about that in my presence. And if you don't like that, you can go. Mm. Now that butted up to me, that butted up against decorum. Like Ariana, you can go if you're uncomfortable. And if this is offending your boundary about right. talking about Sandoval in in a group setting, you can get your your ass up and you can go but to tell somebody with such authority don't speak like this in front of me and you can go i'm like who the fuck do you think you are and nobody says a word no not lala with her big fucking mouth i know schwartz knows better than to say anything but like nobody challenged it at all which kind of goes toward some of what lala's saying either in the after show or in this episode where she's like no it was in the after show like nobody's saying anything to her yeah like she's giving all of these edicts all of these directions telling everybody how to act and feel and we're just letting her she's like get the fuck out of here with that and in this particular moment in this scene i could see that now come at me bro i know people are standing hard for ariana but i'm just trying to be fair like that wasn't very nice 
Yeah, it's a little hard. And I know she's coming from the place of like being triggered that anybody could think that Sandoval is a good person in any light. And I understand that because she's been like that with Sheena all season and Lala all season. I get it. But like maybe slow your roll and just be like, Schwartz, I don't want to hear about that. Please. Right. Let's not talk about how he's a good person because he hurt me. Thank you very much. Like you can be a little bit nicer about Mm -hmm. it. But Katie also does kind of defend her too. And is like, yeah, he's a piece of shit. So maybe shut the fuck up, Schwartz. And Schwartz is dumb for even bringing it up. He knew what he was doing. Well, Katie starts arguing with Sheena, right? Because yeah. Sheena's starting to talk about, I don't know, the sound guy. Every time she talks, first of all, I hate how she talks. Me her too. voice is so annoying. Her affect is annoying. I start to lose consciousness <laughs> and go into another <laughs> astral realm. Yeah. But she's talking about Tom and Katie says something like, when are we going to stop talking about this asshole all the time and defending this asshole all the time? Like, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Right. Which is a better way to approach it than what Ariana did. Totally. Mm -hmm. And then Brock has to chime in and fucking get all triggered. (laughs) Fucking hate him. He's such a piece of shit. And he's like, starts going after Katie because she's saying that. And he's like, well, but you don't understand. She has had this best friend relationship with Sandoval for 15 years. Why can't you guys see her perspective? Like, oh my God. Nobody cares what your opinion is, Brock. Well, he cares what his opinion is. And he's so annoying. He's in every single group scene. Why is he here? Why is he on my television? (laughs) I don't know. On the wrong side of history every single time and presuming to tell the women how to feel about this kind of a betrayal and how to feel in their hearts about it. Like, shut the fuck up. Stop mansplaining to me what it feels like to be betrayed on this level, you asshole. Go take care of your kids. Go back to Australia. Get off my television. (laughs) Preach. Broke. <laughs> He's such a fucking loser. I'm so tired of hearing it. And I'm so tired of this Brock and Sheena storyline about God, Sandoval. It's so boring. I don't it fucking care. It started with Sheena. Yep. And it ended with Sheena. I literally Nobody don't asked care. for this much Sheena. No, not at all. And I don't care that you guys were friends with him for so long. And he gave you money. And that's why you're sucking his dick so much. Fuck y'all both. But maybe, as we have discussed before, maybe Lala and Sheena can sense that Ariana's out the door. Mm. Like Ariana's already thinking like, I don't think I can do this anymore. I don't know if I have to do it anymore. And so they're trying to take an active position with the person who's going to stay, which is Tom Sandoval, which means if that's the case, that they're motivated purely by greed. Yeah, which would make sense. And advancing themselves. Yeah, it makes sense for a bunch of vapid, self-centered assholes. So, and then I wrote down this note because while I was watching this episode last night, I pay for the Peacock with ads because I am cheap and I don't watch a lot of shows on there. It's a business expense. We're professional raccoons. This is a professional dumpster. It's $4.99. I never watch anything on Peacock really unless it's for the show. And I don't care because I can get up and like do my stuff during the ads. Anyway, after this whole scene with like the the lunch and everything, the first ad that came up was an ad for Ariana's DSW really? campaign. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. good. Because it was right after like Lala and Sheena are talking shit about her. And I'm mm-hmm. like, chef's kiss, so good. And then we have Schwartz going over to Joe's um, room. And the only reason why this is important is because he's such an asshole. And he's talking about how she basically looks like a child who got into her mom's makeup anytime mm-hmm. she wears makeup, like a party clown. And I'm like, Fuck this guy. Does he make comments like this about Katie? Like, unironically? Yes. I mean, throughout the years, he's put her down a lot for a variety of things. But I mean, notwithstanding that Schwartz is an absolute asshole. Yeah. I mean... Joe is insufferable. Uh, she's I mean, crazy. Like, <laughs> I know. There's a reason people are calling you a meth head and yeah, a yeah, yeah. I don't agree with that. But like, you act weird. You act wild out in these streets. Like, calm down just a little bit. Not everything's a joke, a gag. Right. Not everything is funny. She's just very annoying to me. I, I Another one. Like, why are you in this show? Yeah. Why are you peripheral to this cast in the show? Get off my television. May I never see you again. <laughs> I know. I literally don't care about you and Schwartz's storyline either unless you guys are fucking and actually dating yeah, he doesn't want you honey no, you look sad out here although he was checking her out in that room i caught him several times he was looking at her ass he's gross he's disgusting and then we have schwartz also going over to sandoval's room to download him about the whole lunch with dan and all of this stuff and sandoval's like yeah i want to talk to ariana and schwartz is like that's not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm not and, really feeling that for you. <laughs> Sandoval's like, yeah, but I just like want her to know that, you know, even if it's 10 years down the line, I'm always going to be there for her. 
I'm so always going to support her. So theatrical, so dramatic and fake. Ugh, what a fucking narcissist. Okay, show of hands. Does anybody believe that Tom Sandoval is legitimately remorseful? Not because he looks bad to the world, but like legitimately remorseful to Ariana for the things that he has done. Because Mm-mm. I don't think so. No. I don't see it at all. Mm-mm. With his one glycerin tear or his visine eyes. Yep. I believe Ariana in the end of this episode mm-hmm. when she talks about how he never says anything to her off camera. He only tries to talk to her in front of the camera, in front of the audience to show, oh, look at me. I'm such a stand-up guy. Mm-hmm. He's a piece of shit, honestly. Yeah. And then we have Kyle Chan's event. Okay. And this is where everything kind of goes down. First of all, mm. Ariana and Dan looked fine. They did. They looked hot as hell they looked way better than sheena sorry he's 40 i thought he was younger than her yeah. i think she's 37 38 something like yeah. that he looks good he looks great you know i like a pan asian american yeah <laughs> I, I do my first husband was a pan asian american yeah yes, oh i do like it i just think he's handsome but so you know what? he's mature yeah he knows how to keep to himself he knows to have that steady stoic energy like that you don't want to fuck with because Mm -hmm. you will find out but on the other hand he's just very gracious just a nice person can assimilate into the group very nicely i wonder if we're going to see him next season yeah ariana's going to be on it if he's going to even want to do this i'd like to see more me too i really like him i think he's a pretty cool dude and he gives her like a calm energy i think he helps kind of ground her a little yes. bit because otherwise she's a little bit crazy but they looked great sheena also has like a weird segment where she's like making it about her mm-hmm. making this whole thing about her and she even says that she does in the interstitial so i'm like is this current day are those recorded current day and she's seeing what people are saying yes online? I, I don't know about current day it's probably recorded around the time of the reunion which mm. was filmed what a month a month and a half ago two ah. months ago so by then because this started in january she was already getting the feedback and I think it was Lala who says in the after show that Sheena stays connected to her social media. Her mom sends her negative feedback on social media. Her PR person sends what? her feedback, negative feedback on social media. So she's really plugged into what everybody is saying. So by the time we're getting her talking head saying, well, but I guess I'm making it all about me. Yeah, the AI is becoming self-aware. <laughs> she's becoming self-aware. I'm just like, why would you say something like that? If you think that it's a joke or like if you think that it's baseless, like we don't know what we're fucking talking about. This whole entire season has been all about fucking mm-hmm. Sheena Marie and her mm-hmm. stupid fucking band and all of her music. Her OCD, her, OCD, her anxiety, the nanny, her Tom relationship Sandoval. with Tom, Ugh. how it hurt her. I'm like, how did it hurt you? You only benefited from what Tom did. Seriously. What did it cost cringe. you? I don't trust anybody anymore. <laughs> when Brock sees Lala, I don't know if they're fucking i'm like okay that's a you problem go get a therapist i guess she tried to go to the doctor couldn't take the zoloft but like keep trying i mean seriously she's well i I know there's different kinds of narcissists yeah like there's um very malignant Mm -hmm. confident narcissists and then you have those narcissists narcissists who need to make it all about themselves because they're so insecure inside yeah whatever that's called that's what she is like a very vulnerable inwardly very very non-confident confident person 100 percent, and that's why it's so insufferable anytime she's on the show because it's like oh my god it's a black hole of need so much need and so cringy because i'm like grow up already you're 40 and that's okay Honestly. to be 40 like listen i'm i'm way older no, than yeah. that like go ahead live your life feel good about yourself but like the songs that you're sing- singing are like teen songs no seriously you're not a teen no it was so cringy when we get there we'll get there oh we will like, get there i stopped it though I WhatsApp to you. I know. It's like, I literally, the secondhand cringe embarrassment is making me uncomfortable. I have to walk around my home. I've got to do laps because this is so terrible. I couldn't even watch it. Like, I just listened to it and I'm like, I can't. And like the montage of everybody, we'll get to it. Okay. It's so cringy. Then we also have James and Allie. Okay. They were kind of cute though. All right. Him okay. professing his love in the That's parking great. lot. That yeah. was sweet. Okay, fine. And then Sandoval. <laughs> Sandoval goes up to Brock and he's like, I just want to thank you, man, for like always having my back and like I really appreciate you and then gives him a bro hug. And then Brock like proceeds to lecture him like he's been doing all season because apparently he's the arbiter of morality yeah okay and i'm like shut the fuck up he's like yeah but you know you got to keep doing what you can do to like make amends to people like shut up bro seriously 
He's never going to do it. You know he's never going to do it. And I don't want to hear it. Why would anybody want to take advice from fucking Brock? Right. Either? Like you don't as talk if, to your kids. You yeah. literally hit women. I'm sorry, but go away. Go You're a horrible pound, person. Yeah, pound sand with your male rage. <laughs> Get fucked. And then we have everybody kind of sitting down in their little VIP section. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, this is where mm-hmm. Sandoval goes up to Dan and says, hey, I just wanted to say I'm Sandoval or Tom. And I'm really happy for you guys. I wish you guys the best. I just want to say nice to meet you. And Mm -hmm. then leaves, which I thought Dan handled pretty well. Very much so. And also Ariana didn't do anything either. She was just on her phone. Right. Didn't say anything to him. Didn't escalate at all. She literally just disconnected, which is totally fine. But some people online are actually coming for Ariana after this episode. Why? Like we've already had a few people DM us on Instagram be like, I thought Ariana was being a big old bitch. Mm. And I don't know. I mean, what is she supposed to do? Look up and talk to Tom Sandoval? No, I know. I'm like, what, what do you want her to do? But some people who really didn't like Ariana this season. So, right. But I thought it was very performative that he went to go up <laughs> and say hi to Dan. I thought that mm-hmm. was really gross. And well, he I, had been intending to do it the entire time. Yeah. And this is just another like puzzle piece in his redemption arc. He wants to make himself look like the bigger man, the hero when somebody's popping off in the party. Like he wants himself to project that. And yeah. So that's why he had to do that. And I think Ariana knows that. He's doing it for camera time. He's doing that for audience approval. Mm-hmm. And that's why she's paying him dust. I'm not even going to look at you. Oh, yeah. And Ariana in her interstitial even says, like, I'm not going to be a cog in the Tom Sandoval redemption arc machine. Mm-hmm. Like, she's calling out the producers yep. for this stupid fucking narrative that you've had mm-hmm. all season to try and get us to like Sandoval. Right. Which is insane to me. And people are making memes about that on Instagram already saying, and they fucked up mm-hmm. like this season could they have did. been so good that's why I think they're putting it on pause mm. because I think the production company needs to regroup yep. figure out what the fuck are they doing because they're definitely sending mixed signals with the various montages yeah. about Ariana but also about Tom like the hot mic at the end of this episode it's like The editors have so much power and influence about how we ultimately feel about the shows and the the cast. Yeah. So what do you want us to feel? I'm a little bit confused. Yeah, it's very weird. And like when Lala goes on her rant about how the show is very real and very honest. I couldn't take that. I'm like, what are you talking about? This season felt so fucking produced. Like all of you guys are fucking lying. What did Lala show of her life? Exactly. I mean, she showed us, I guess, her sperm journey. (laughs) She showed us that she's got an apartment and her mom is over. But like literally you're jabbing at Ariana Mm -hmm. for bringing nothing. But like you brought nothing except to instigate and to be a producer plant. That's all you brought. And it's boring AF. The reason we watch this is because people aren't aware of themselves as reality stars and get themselves into actual situations, have actual conversations and fights. And that's interesting. Yeah. But this is not interesting. This Mm -mm. is predictable, Lala. You're fucking predictable. Yep. You're not as smart as you think you are. You're not a fucking thug either, lady. I know. You're going to come up and meet the wrong one. For real. I am shocked. Shocked that she hasn't yet. I know. Lauren it's from Utah. Yeah, oh, yeah. 100%. Mm. And then after um, Sandoval greets Dan, then we have some rando who's like trying to get into the VIP section. And then he is like drinking everybody's drinks. And then he starts fighting the security guards and throwing glass. Right. And that was pretty entertaining. And then Sandoval, of course, uh-huh. has to interject himself into the situation to act like he's the fucking hero. Right. When the security guard's already taking care of it, bro. Right. Well, there have been some pictures floating around the internet of that guy. Oh, yeah. And Tom and that guy and Billy Lee and that guy and some of Tom's other crew. Mm. Like the theory is that that was staged and (gasps) they staged it so that Tom could rush in and be the hero and further this redemption arc. Stop no, it. that No, that, like, that's Tom's friend, and they wow. planned it so that that would happen. Yes. Wow. Because to me, it felt very forced. Like, what's going on? This I'm is like, very strange. Why are you attacking a security guard for actually no reason? I know. I mean, it was entertaining. Yes. It was, like, very dramatic. But I'm like, and then why is Sandoval trying to be like, exactly. what's going on? Right. What's going on? Let me get this chair See, and See, I'm throw a good it. guy. I'll throw myself in the middle of this melee to help whoever. Oh, my I'm God. A good God. yeah okay yeah 
Mr. I paint my fingernails. Like, you're not going to do shit. I'm sorry. What do you have against men who paint their fingernails? I, I think it. it's perfectly fine. One of my very best friends paints his nails, honey. I don't have anything wrong with it. I'm just dogging on his appearance right. because I hate him so much. Okay. That's why. I will allow it. Because he's a loser and he acts like he's this tough guy. But I'm like, you're not. You're a guy from mm-hmm. fucking LA. What are you going to do? Yeah. You're not going to do shit. Stop acting like a thug like Lala. Mm-hmm. It's so ridiculous. And then we have the Sheena Marie performance mm. of apples and good as gold mm. and it was horrible it was really fucking bad and she was performing with the 27s okay her band i guess that she's gonna go on tour with did i dream that did i dream this last night that we had a conversation in <sighs> which you told me i was a part of this lame ass ho ass band <laughs> so embarrassing i'm embarrassed for her i mean okay if she had talent yeah if she had something creative like substantively creative to offer i'd be like okay you're a little bit long in the tooth for the industry don't come (laughs) at me this is california this is hollywood true yeah you're a little long on the tooth to do it but like you've got actual talent so go out there and try but sheena you don't have any talent there's a reason you don't have a series of fucking number one hits it's because you can't sing you're auto tuned to death i know i'm like are you lip singing on this she's singing over the track okay so that's what the track is playing loudly and she's singing along to it off key yeah nobody wants that no it's embarrassing it's so cringe and then sandoval again is like cheering her on and he's like smiling and he's like oh yeah i know i didn't like apples at first but now it's growing on me and i'm like this is so fake yeah this is all just for your redemption art it's so cringe but then you have ariana and even katie in the crowd they know each and every word yeah that was they cute, are though. supporting her i thought that was really fantastic girls supporting girls even yep. though sheena you male sympathizer you don't do that for them but getting ahead of myself yeah oh and i fucking forgot but joe goes up to katie <gasps> oh i really want to talk about yes. this with you so Tell us what happened. Well, Joe starts talking with Schwartz at first. And she's like, I really want to like apologize to Katie. But I also want her to apologize to me Mm -hmm. for being so mean. And Schwartz is like, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Let's go do it. Which is so mean because he knows how Katie's going to be. He definitely knows who Katie is as a person. Mm, mm, mm. And then she goes over there and she goes, I'm sorry if i hurt your feelings katie and katie immediately pounces on her and she's like you're sorry if you're sorry if you Mm. did hurt me Mm. and proceeds to dress joe down yeah deeply i mean so joe changes how she's apologizing she's like okay i'm sorry that i did these things but that's not enough for katie because katie's really pissed off yeah and this was really toxic af of katie really toxic af of katie you have proceeded to go on and have a couple of different relationships with other people you even had a relationship with max boyens for whatever reason like you're living your life tom's out here with his girl having his life get mad at tom right i mean by all accounts you weren't actually really friends with joe like you were acquaintances that was Kristen's friend so she mm. knew of joe but it's not like they hung out a lot together it's not like they were deep friends yeah and so the way that she came at her was so mean that's the katie that i remember from seasons before that's the katie that i used to hate on vanderpump rules that's the woman hating katie yeah that she didn't need to do all that. Joe, for as quirky and weird as she definitely is, and also for as inappropriate as she was to send her a text, hey, I support you, and then go fuck your man. Right. That's inappropriate. She's obviously coming cap in hand like Robin Brown. She's obviously not your equal Yeah. in a lot of ways. And we don't even have to get into all the ways. You could stand to have a little grace. What yeah. would it cost you to just say, you know what, you really hurt me? I'm not ready to accept your apology. Maybe at some point in the future we can have a discussion. But no, you got to go so hard and so heavy for the jugular. I was just like, that's a bad look. Yeah, and she made Joe cry, which I kind of felt bad for. But at the same time, Joe, I don't think, was coming over there for the best intentions, really. I She even says at one point in their little altercation, she wasn't even thinking about Katie when she went to go couch surf, as she calls it, on Schwartz's couch. Like, And Katie's like, you could have gone to literally anybody else, but you had to go after my man. Like literally like a month or so after they 
split up. That's pretty fucked up to me. And so well, Joe seemed to be contesting that. She said that there were months in between the text and when she actually hooked up with Schwartz. I don't believe that. Okay. I feel like they've been lying their whole friends with benefits thing. Like it took them till just now to admit that they've been fucking this whole entire time anyway. So it's like, I don't know. I think Katie was too hard. She was really mean. I mean, when Lala's telling you to chill out, like, like maybe it's a little bit of a bad look yeah. to come so hard for this woman who is not your intellectual, your physical, your emotional equal. Like you don't have to do all that. You could just sit there in your grace and win that entire argument with like saying nothing really or just totally. saying thanks for saying that i really appreciate it period and just be done with it or get up and fucking walk away yeah pull an ariana exactly no but you got to be mean yeah that was you've got to be hurtful you've got to try and hurt this girl and make her cry yeah and then but schwartz is like well she just wants peace and katie's like i don't want peace i'm like well i mean i guess that's fair but like this dang. is why lala says you're a miserable person mm. this is why lala says you're unhappy and you're angry and yeah Let's keep in mind that I think Schwartz and Katie had been separated slash divorced for about a year at the time of this filming, maybe a year and a half. Okay. So, I mean, it's still a bit fresh. Yeah. And I think Joe moving so quickly to hook up with Tom was probably really painful at the time. Yep. So, I mean, I understand where the emotion is coming from, but like you don't have the right to speak to people like that without yeah. repercussion. I mean, you could do what the fuck you want, but right. I'm going to judge you for it. Like, who do you think you are? Totally. You're not better than anybody else just because you think Joe's weird, which right. you actually call her weird. And Lala has to say, don't do that. Like, yeah. we're not fucking in high school. You're not a mean girl click. Yeah. And then when she gets up to leave and Joe goes and cries and leaves, I think Katie goes up to Schwartz and is like, I've told you a million times, keep it away from me. Like, she calls Joe an it. Mm -hmm. and i'm like okay we don't have to be that vile i mean it's fucking joe and like she seems like a real person she might be weird okay she might be kind of crazy but she seems like a real person who's stuck in this vapid circle of people for some reason i don't know why these people idolize each other like this like i don't know why they go to these parties and they're like oh fame. my god they're so cool fame and celebrity and cloud Ooh, i can't relate i hate that yeah I mean, I, I don't know why else Joe would even be on the periphery of this particular friend group. But I have to say, like, all of the goodwill that Katie built with me as just one audience member, mm. because I never really liked her. I told you that at the beginning. Yeah. Like, in one episode, I'm like, okay, I'm side-eyeing you again. Yeah. You're just a mean, despicable person. I wouldn't want to be around you either. Yeah. So. Like, I like that she defends Ariana yes. with her boundaries and stuff. But then when she does shit like this, I'm like, damn, you're a bitch. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, you you're can really be. terrible. Yeah. She's not a trash person. She's doing a trash thing. Yeah, right. Okay. She's actually a good person. Just did a trash thing. Right. Okay. And then after Sheena Marie's performance, Ariana goes up to congratulate her. And this is where Sheena's got to talk to her again about how she Why? thinks that Sandoval's growing. Why? I can't. Why can't it just be about your performance? Why can't it just be about your friendship? Why can't it just be a download about your lives? Why do we have to talk about Tom again? I don't know. And Sheena fucking cries again. She's like, I think he's really genuine. I think he's actually growing. And Ariana, you can see the She's look like, in her oh my face. God, are we doing this again? She's like, okay, Is can I just set up? Yeah, and she goes, can I just ask you, I don't want to hear about his growth. Mm -hmm. That's it. And she's like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then this is where Ariana and her interstitial is like, I don't know where Sheena's gotten this idea where I don't want to be friends with somebody who's friends with Sandoval. I never said that. Cue the producer yeah. flashbacks. Yeah. Flashbacks. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I'm just like, I side-eyed Ariana for that a little bit because yes. I'm like, you're acting like you didn't have this harsh line and this whole time put this pressure on not just sheena but the rest of the group you absolutely have and you yep. showed that and non king talking to schwartz the way that you did feeling super entitled to speak to people that way and dictate the terms of this friend group like you don't get to do that yep it's giving me olivia plath a little bit like you can't hang around the plath parents because it violates my boundary it's like mm -hmm. you can't control what other people do right you can control what you do and you can remove yourself from the situation and that's totally fine you don't have to fucking interact with tom sandoval mm -hmm. but like don't dictate what everybody else can do 
Was this conversation before or after the performance? This was after. Okay. Got yeah. It. Got it. It was congrats. She was congratulating her for yeah, such a I mean, good job. I mean, despite Ariana being immediately frustrated, as I think anybody would be, like if you're putting something super negative in front of my face over and over and over again, I'm going to get exhausted and I'm not going to want to be around you. So despite that, Sheena doing that all season and Sheena doing it in this scene in particular, like. Ariana is still so supportive of Sheena. Yep. She's so there for her. She's yep. congratulatory. And she also is like, you're never going to lose me. Yeah. You are my family. I am here with you. Do not worry about that. Yeah. I'm mean, like way more support than Sheena actually deserves, especially when like in the next scene, she's with Lala, agreeing with Lala that Ariana's acting like Beyonce. I no yeah she is such a backstabber so fucking terrible so fucking lame so terrible and so after ariana and sheena hug and they kiss and she's like i love you and she's like i love you too then sandoval has to interject into this conversation to talk to sheena and be like hey sheena congrats and this is where ariana fucking leaves mm -hmm. she doesn't say a word no she just leaves and this is where she gets mad at the producers because mm -hmm. the producers are trying to keep her there. at the party and keep her on set and they want this conversation to happen they do and she's like no i'm not gonna fucking talk to him he does not get access to me this is where she talks about non-informed consent right. because he doesn't give a fuck if i die in a fucking ditch or if he gives me a deadly std while he's fucking around my back mm -hmm. i'm done i right. don't i don't want to talk to him he does not deserve it and i thought that was fucking based i did as well and i'm 100 percent team ariana on Me too. that you could tell that everybody in the cast was kind of standing around waiting for this conversation to happen like they all planned for like one final blowout between tom and ariana so that this conversation could happen and yep. she's just not giving them what they're expecting. She's not giving them what they want. She's not giving the producers what they want because the producer is like, please don't go. Like, no, I need you back in. Or like, we've got to have this conversation. He's like, I absolutely don't have to have this conversation. Mm -hmm. I have agency over my body and yep. I don't need this bullshit. And so nope. she left. I loved it. Me too. I'm like, pop off, queen. And she left peacefully she got dan mm -hmm. he's like let's call a lift they go stand outside and that was it yeah she fucking leaves and so after she walks out then sheena tells sandoval about it and she's like he, she doesn't want to talk to you because sandoval tried to go after her right which was really fucked up because you know she doesn't want to talk to you mm -hmm. obviously yeah and you're still trying to violate her boundary because you're a fucking narc and then this is where sandoval starts getting pissed because mm -hmm. sheena says ariana thinks that Sandoval's being performative. And this is what sets him over the edge. Mm -hmm. And he starts screaming. He's like, I'm not fucking performative. If anybody's performative, it's Ariana because she fucking hates all you fuckers. And she's lazy. Oh she doesn't God. film and she doesn't show up. And I'm the one who has always historically shown up for the both of us because okay. she can't fucking be arsed to get out of bed because she's lazy. And I'm just like, okay, what happened to all that? <laughs> all that graciousness all that the composure growth. all that growth you were showing like it's in a drop of a hat it's totally gone and they all go over to where lala is and i think katie is buzzing around somewhere mm -hmm. and this is where they have the conversation that breaks the fourth wall like when i saw this scene at the beginning of the season with lala yelling like who does she think she is how do you get everything you ever wanted and or how do you, what did she say? She was like, how can somebody get cheated on and then think that they're God? Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So when I saw that at the beginning of the season, I thought, oh my God, something must have really gone down. Like Lala's pissed. Ariana must have really done something to Lala. I'm like, she didn't do anything to you, Lala. Nothing. She walked out of the room. She avoided a conflict. She didn't want to get messy. She's conducting herself like a mature woman. Not that you'd know anything about that life. Right. That's what makes her mad because she was waiting around to interject herself in the in inevitable messy conversation with Sandoval. Yep. And now she doesn't get to. So now she's going to blow up mm -hmm. and talk all this shit about uh, Ariana and be like, I can't believe you're leaving that's such a slap in the face and i'm like why as if you're the fucking producer of the show well because she wants everybody to show up show their lives this is what they've been doing most of their adult life this is what the job is you can't just walk out and not have conversations as if she didn't do that for years with randall emmett like get the fuck 
over it. Exactly. Miss me with that. This is exactly out of your playbook. Ariana has shown up so much more in this season than you ever did in those seasons. And you have the nerve to call her out for it. I'm like, oh my gosh, shut the fuck up already. Right. And she even says something where she's like, Tom and Ariana were not honest about their relationship until he cheated. So what does that mean? What would she be referring to? That they didn't show the inner workings of their relationship. And Tom has said that there were a lot of problems, like that this had been going on for quite some time, mm -hmm. that Ariana was very disrespectful, yada, yada, yada. And so she's saying like, but we didn't see any of that. Mm. We saw you show up at the different parties. We saw, we saw Ariana platforming Tom Sandoval quite a lot, super big supporter of Tom Sandoval, but not really have a whole lot going on in her own life. Mm. And that's what she's calling out. She's like, not until something went wrong in the relationship are we even learning about who you two are in a relationship. Wow. So that's what she's mad about? Yes. That's really freaking stupid. Well, I mean, actually, it's, it's fair. Like, if you're going to be putting yourself on this show, show us your actual life. Andy Cohen says this to all of these reality stars all the time. Like, this is your fucking job. But Lala, you're not the messenger to be to, to be saying that because you haven't done that. That's what I'm saying. And what the fuck have you done this entire season? I haven't seen anything about your life. Nothing at all. Besides, you're saying that you're sober and you have a sparkling and water, water business. And water is your thing. Who oh cares? God. I'm snoring. I'm literally losing consciousness. I'm dwelling in the fifth dimension where it's way better than your life. Seriously. Even Sheena and Brock and all of them, I feel like everybody shows what they want us to see because, mm -hmm. of course, they're all human beings. They don't want all their right. fucking dirty laundry sure. on TV. And I get that. But, like, you're also on a reality show. So give us something. Mm -hmm. We can't just be watching a bunch of boring ass people drink sparkling water mm -hmm. and go to all these fucking parties and stuff and be boring as fuck. Yep. Nobody cares. And have it be produced as fuck. Yes. And manufactured as fuck and fake as fuck. Yes. I mean, even James and Allie are boring. I mean, like, they're sweet they're and love, all. They're wholesome. But they're boring. Yeah, And they don't we really don't know what's on. going on in their life mm -hmm. besides her astrology readings and his endless DJ gigs. And right. I'm like, what about what happened when you broke up with him and he had to get sober? Like, what about a deeper dive on that relationship aspect? Like, I'd love to hear about that, but we're not even getting that from them. Right. So why are we doing this show? Mm. And that is why you're on pause. It's not just because Ariana's in Fiji doing Love Island. It's because y'all have lost the plot. Yeah. Y'all have lost the plot. After the final three episodes of Vanderpump Rules season 10, last season, we got invested again. Yes. Oh, we're like, oh, fuck, it's real again. Yeah. I want to see what happens to these people. And then you came back on your bullshit right. for season 11. And now I'm like, I'm out. Like, it was boring before season 10. Really? Yeah. It was for getting, years? It was, it was winding down. Mm. We lost cast members, Jax, and some yeah. of these total trash bags who are now on the Valley. Lost a lot of people. Things shifted and changed. And now I'm just like, give me a reason. Right. There's nothing. And like, even on the Valley, when you contrast it, like the Valley, it's not like there's a lot going on in terms of like parties and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But there's gossip and there's like mm -hmm. friend dynamics infidelity. and relationships. Yes. Yeah. Active infidelity. Relationship active betrayal. Stuff. Yes. Yeah. And it's way more interesting because it's real life problems and real people dealing with their life and dealing with it in the worst ways, which is because like the they're best. not trained reality stars exactly. because they came on thinking they knew what everybody wanted to see yeah and wanting to present themselves in a certain way but not knowing how to do it yet and right. so it ends up backfiring and it's incredibly entertaining it is on the valley but you've got these veterans right i mean doing this for 12 whole years God, i can't imagine yeah they're completely moderating and yep. legislating what they're giving. And it's not interesting to me. No, it's, it's just not. not. And I'm not by So let's do a breakdown. All oh, right. We got to get to the very end because of the hot mic. Oh, yeah. With Tom? Yes. When after all of this ends and the montages yeah. and everything, the producer's like, this is the end. And they said, that was a fucking plot twist. And Sandoval's like, yeah, it works out for me, though. Yeah. I'm like, really? It does? Right. How so? Right. And then you have... 
Ariana in her talking head saying like, if this is so important to you to apologize to me or to have a conversation with me, it should be as important when the cameras aren't there. Mm -hmm. You could have written me a letter. You could have talked to me in a different way and I could have received that. But you never tried when I've been there the entire time. I've been under the same roof the entire time, except when she's traveling, of course. Yeah. Like there's many opportunities off camera that you could have done that. But because you wanted this to happen on cameras, that's your true colors that's who you are oh totally and actually there was a part where sheena calls him out calls him out for this before he blows up and gets all triggered she asks him what do i mean to you and he's like a a lot and she's like well just because the cameras are rolling or like in general and he's like no i'm there for you like i show up and she looks at him and i think she knows that it's fake and that ariana and katie have been right this whole entire time and she's like don't make me look like a fucking idiot i don't think she knows that at all i think she Mm -hmm. continues to say things that can be interpreted as support for ariana but she doesn't believe them at all she is a tom sandoval sympathizer Hmm. i just wonder if she did that because she has a little bit of a heart like she's like oh yeah no i do love him because she cries a lot about him and stuff i know she's fake but like I just wonder if there was like a nugget of truth. Like maybe he convinced her to be like, yeah, be my ride or die all season and it's going to work out for you. And now it's not. Mm -hmm. Sandoval kind of echoes this. He's like, everybody that is humanizing me is dealing with all of the heat for it. And I'm like, yeah, Mm -hmm. I mean, it's hard for me to see you as a human though when you do shit like this and you're fake as fuck on the cameras. Right. And then I know when you turn the cameras off, you're a piece of shit still. Real recognizes real raccoons are real yeah we can clock it the we can see monocle. it they are pathetic mm-hmm. and so now let's do a cast breakdown how we feel about them at the end of the season starting with ariana i love her you love still, her still yeah i like her yeah i like her i'm very curious to see if she returns because i think it's 50 50 right now yeah and she even references in the after show like check the contract mm. like these are the terms under which i show up to work and it's in my contract so you can blow me So I am interested in Ariana if she comes back with something interesting. Yeah. What about Katie? I mean, I still like Katie. Yeah. I I mean, I I know she's a mean girl and she's a bit of a bitch, but I still like that she was ride or die for Ariana the entire season. Like she never wavered on that. So loyal. So loyal, Mm -hmm. defending her boundary. Like I really do respect that. Yes. I feel good about Katie. I think she's come a long, long way, baby. I think that there are parts within all of us that can lose our cool yeah mean not be appropriate and i think we saw some of that tonight but like it was very ugly but at the same time as a person i think she's growing so i like her and i'm optimistic about katie what about james i liked him this season yeah i know you don't like him because of the dv rumors and stuff but i'm warming to him yeah i hope they're not true yeah i hope they're not true but if they turn out to be true then then i just i can't see him where is he i don't even see him who but I liked him and um, Allie together. I think they're a cute couple. I okay. think he's. I think she's good for him. Tom Schwartz? Fuck him. Okay. Slimy fucking worm, loser, Bieber, blonde, piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like him. Yeah. If spineless and milk toast yes. were a person, you'd have Tom. But he's also very sniveling and conniving yes. behind the scenes. He's not a dumb person. Mm-mm. And I just think he's a bad person. Yeah. Um, what about Lala? Ugh, I liked her at the beginning of the season. I really did. And I like that she can speak her mind and everything and she's not afraid to fight people. But then as the end of the season, I'm like, fuck you. You're yeah. a hypocrite. You're talking out your ass and you're going behind your friend's back and it's going to bite you in the ass mm-hmm. on the reunion. I already can tell. I don't like her and there have been seasons where I've really liked her and there have been seasons when Katie and Stassi have been really, really mean to her and really put her down and slut shamed her and I I was really supportive of her. But then over the last five seasons with the Bambi eyed bitch against Raquel, like how mean she was Mm. with Raquel, how toxic she is, whether she's drunk or whether she's dry. She's just not a nice person. She's a mean person and she's unwilling to get help. She's unwilling to get therapy so she can fucking get off my TV. I'm sick of her. Yeah. Sheena? 
Fuck Sheena. Oh, so annoying. So self so I'm sorry, but I'm just, I know there's a lot of Sheena stands in our fan base. That's cool. Yeah, you know, whatever. On. But she's so annoying. Uh, she is a black hole of need. Yep. She is constantly in search of the light. She wants to be platformed. She wants to be centered. And even when she's still very prominent, she still feels, unless it's centered, that she's not being seen. Yep. And she's a very insecure person. She's in a marriage that I think is actually pretty toxic. I don't think it's going to last. I mm -hmm. think she's desperate to keep so many streams of income together, which I think inherently she knows she will lose if she loses mm. Vanderpump Rules. Because once Vanderpump Rules is gone, who's checking for you, Sheena? Fucking nobody. Absolutely. Neither is broke. Nope. <laughs> Speaking of which, what do you think of broke? I hate him. Because some people really liked him. Why? Uh, I hate him. I hate that he was coming after Ariana the whole entire time saying she needs to stop being bitter and needs to forgive Sandoval. Like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Nobody needs your opinion. Right. And you're also pretty terrible to your wife, yelling at her for her OCD mm -hmm. and for her caring about your kid and caring about who watches your kid. And you're like, well, just get a nanny. Just get somebody. Fuck you. Fuck you, Brock. And, and why can't you watch your kid? It's for real. I mean, I don't have a problem with the men being at home taking care of the children and <laughs> like taking Nick care Davis. of... Yeah, like Nick Davis <laughs> from Seeking Sister Wife. I don't have a problem with that. I'm like yeah. not tied to gender normative fucking roles. Sure. But like all you talk about are the businesses you want to start with Sheena's money uh -huh. and all of the projects you want to do with Sheena's backing. Mm -hmm. Like stay home, fucking make dinner, take care of that kid and quit your fucking bitching. For and real. And get off my TV, Brock. Nobody needs you. Sandoval. I hate him. He's a worm with a mustache. Okay. I know he doesn't have a mustache really this season, but Brock I hate him. Yeah. He's Brock. a worm. Anyway. People are saying he's a worm with a mustache okay. too. Yes. 2.0. But yeah, Sandoval's just like, you want us to think that you're a human being and that you've, you've changed and you've grown and everything. I don't see it at all. At all. Because if you actually grew, you wouldn't have said anything to Ariana all season you would have respected her boundaries you would have shut the fuck up when you guys were in group situations and you wouldn't have bothered her but you kept attacking antagonizing her you wanted to turn the audience against her by saying she's the mean one who's abusing you and was so angry and terrible i don't buy it fuck you yeah that's my hot take on it i think that he doesn't have any substance beneath the veneer mm -hmm. and unfortunately for him the veneer is on its way out like if you think you're good looking that's great but now you're in your 40s you're going to be in your 50s what are you taking with you into your future that is eternal yeah. <laughs> that is something you can hold on to i know that you're a creative person but honestly like sheena shea you suck it's your creativity Cringe. like you actually can't sing you're very pitchy i don't yeah. know why people pay to see you sing it's, really it's terrible it's really but like bad. you've got nothing going on underneath mm -mm. like the emperor fucking has no clothes you've got nothing to offer and so i don't want to see you back next season because really you aren't even allowed into schwartz and sandy i know like, we can't even see you like working an actual job what we're supposed to follow you around with the most extras we're over it tom so over you it. are so yesterday yes. get the fuck off my tv so like what is the solution for vanderpump rules like if it is supposed to endure if it's going to come back and be successful what does it need to do in your opinion Beatrice? oh god i don't even know i really don't even know because if ariana would have to be on it it'd have to be something like that but she'd have to be entertaining i don't want to see you yelling at sandoval the whole entire time unless it's like crazy unless it's about your lawyer stuff i'd love to know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about what's going on in your guys's lawsuit and the house and everything that'd be cool but we're not going to get into any of the real stuff we're mm -hmm. just going to be going to more water sommeliers and mm -hmm. fucking trips to tahoe manufactured events that you guys would never go on unless exactly. it was for this show i can't deal with that mm -hmm. it's so boring otherwise i 100 percent agree and i think they need to clear the decks i think they need to recast this new cast completely yep. i don't think we need a bunch of 20 year old messes we already have that with southern hospitality yeah but i think we could get some late 20s some early 30s like a whole new cast maybe yeah. you could keep one or two of these folks i don't know who that would be though Ugh. maybe 
Lala? I don't I know. Guess. I can't. I mean, Ariana's not that interesting. Katie, I want a place for Katie. Katie would be cool. Like, I would love for Katie to land somewhere because I'm not sure what else she's doing besides something about her. Yeah. Like, if Vanderpump goes away, I hope you've been investing. I hope you have some properties or something. Hopefully. But, like, I don't even know about her journey if I'd want to see it. I just clear the decks. Uh, start yeah. Start over and or shutter it. Shut it down. Cancel it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I wonder if they're going to cancel it after yeah. the season because it was such a dud because maybe maybe this was their like plan b storyline was tom sandoval's reden- redemption arc because raquel declined to film at the last minute they were like fuck right now what do we do but i'm like you could have come up with anything anything better yeah it was bad it yeah it's a bad season horrible so those are our final thoughts yeah. on vanderpump rules if you are on youtube and you guys want to let us know what you think about it like did you like the season finale did you like the season are you thinking we're nuts in our position (laughs) about sandoval or lala like tell us what you think we love to read your comments we read this one i read them all she reads them all honey she said we got a comment on our last video where someone was talking about her twirling her hair yeah and like would you stop it already beatrice yeah they're like i like this show but can the blonde stop twirling my hair and i said no a nervous tick it like a a she- it's a tick. sheena shea ocd tick <laughs> i should get on the zoloft you should get on the zoloft <laughs> like just leave us alone yeah. we're showing up creating content we're gonna show up looking like this don't if you be got a mean. problem with it cry more <laughs> for cry real more. get fucked up oh, we still have to talk about the valley so let's get the fuck out of here yeah. um is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons beatrice well if you love our podcast i sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review five. please make it nice because we <laughs> appreciate it so much oh my gosh thank you <laughs> Um, we'll be back next week to continue our journeys with our various shows. Yeah. So make sure you come back for that. But until then, please do not forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>